Okay, as, as I said, uh, good afternoon. I have to say, I have to greet everyone in all uh, time zones and in many countries around the world. I'll, I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Rabbi Ari Rockoff. I have the distinct, distinct pleasure and honor to serve as the executive vice president of Mizrahi in, based out of the United States of America. I have uh, the great pleasure to, uh, to, um, to welcome our distinguished guests and presenters. Um, who I will introduce more formally shortly, but uh, I'll just mention we welcome Her, Her Excellency Ambassador Huda Nunu, member of the Jewish community in Bahrain. Again, we'll, uh, we'll, I'm sharing uh, your full bios uh, um, on the screen so we can um, start to meet you. And, um, and Rabbi Dr. Eli Abadi, Senior Rabbi of the Jewish Council of the Emirates. Thank you so, so much for, for joining us um, in the evening time, um, especially on the eve of Purim, we're so, so, um, so, so honored to have you. I also want to welcome all of our, um, um, all those who are participating, uh, literally from around the world. Um, we're very privileged to have um, representation, you know, on this, on this town hall, on this Mizrahi town hall from the United States of America, Canada, UK, Israel, and uh, South Africa, Australia, we, have, we do have a branch there. We let them sleep. Maybe they can, uh, we'll have to do a retake for our, our Australian branch. But thank you all so much for making the time to participate in such a, an exciting program that, um, that we're so much looking forward to. Uh, we gather at this town hall on the eve of Purim. Uh, this year, Purim will be celebrated um, around the world, um, including uh, more, more to share on that um, as, as we discussed, um, but uh, one year ago for most of us was uh, a tr very traumatic and very, um, a perm of last year was very traumatic and um, impactful in our memory. It's etched in our memory because it was last perm after all that the world changed uh, in ways that uh, we've all experienced. The, with all the ups and downs and, and the topsy-turvy nature of that, um, with challenges also came many opportunities and sil sil well, what, I, what I would say silver, the silver lining of that. One that brings us all together, the world became smaller. Our ability to be interconnected via Zoom. Um, most of us were not using Zoom day in, day out at that point. And it also ha has brought us to a world of ex such exciting announcements uh, um, that we're gonna be addressing today. As many of you know, who are joining us, there was a groundbreaking announcement just this past week uh, about the formation of the Association of the Gulf Jewish Communities, um, which is the first formal association formed to enhance regional Jewish life in the Gulf nations, including Bahrain, the United Arab, Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia. In recent months, there's been tremendous fascination about the Jewish communities in the Gulf region. And we are very privileged today, as I said, to welcome our, our keynote presenters, uh, Her Excellency Ambassador Huda Nunu and Rabbi Dr. Eli Abadi, who will be who are on the front lines, uh, creating and building this uh, new entity, and are we're delighted to have you and to uh, and to learn from you. Thank you so so much for joining. Um, what you. I'd like to do just by by um, I share the screen. What I'd like to do is actually divide the questions um, in the following fashion. I'm going to uh, begin. Um, with asking questions to, uh, to uh, Ambassador Nunu and then to Rabbi Dr. Abadi. And then we're gonna ask everyone um, if, if they're interested to send questions by email, um, we'll, we'll be monitoring the email. And we'll, uh, if we have time, we have so much to discuss, but if we have time, we'll be able to uh, address those questions at the end. So uh, Ambassador Nunu, um, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your backgrounds um, and particularly about uh, Bahrain and the Bahrain community, which of course has a long, long standing legacy. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thank you, Rabbi Ari, for inviting me to participate in the Mizrahi Town Hall. Um, first, I would like to start by thanking His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and our former Foreign Minister, His Excellency Sheikh Khalid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, for appointing me to this important to the important position of ambassador and for all their support. I was honored to serve my country as its ambassador to the United States as a strategic partner for us. In some ways, it's more surprising to non-Bahrainis that Bahrain appointed a Jewish ambassador 
as His Majesty has always backed the policy of interfaith engagement. His Majesty has always supported equal rights and opportunities for people of all faiths. And so it didn't stick out as odd to me that a Jew would be appointed to this position. Uh, during my time in the United States, I had the opportunity to meet with many Jewish community leaders and to attend Shabbat and holiday services with the Jewish communities in DC and New York. In fact, that's actually how Rabbi Abadi and I first met when I was in New York for the United Nations General Assembly as it took place around the time of Yom Kippur. Yes, terrific. Um, so it sounds like you two know each other from a previous, uh, previous life. That's sure. wonderful. Rabbi Dr. Abadi, um, share with us, please. We're interested to, to know what inspired you to, uh, to assume this unique and, uh, and groundbreaking opportunity. Well, you know, it's, uh, it has been actually uh, uh, many years since my first contact with uh, the UAE. Uh, but let me go a bit uh, further back in my uh, life story as I was born in uh, Beirut, Lebanon, uh, son of uh, Jewish Syrian refugees who had to escape Syria at the heel of the partition plan, uh, November 29, 1947, where uh, mobs in many Arab countries, unfortunately, rose against the Jewish communities, uh, eluded their, their businesses, their synagogues. My parents lived in Aleppo, Syria, right next door to the great synagogue, where they saw with their own eyes how the mob entered into the synagogue, set it afire, burned Torah scrolls, Humashim, Sidurim, and they grabbed the rabbi and dumped him in the street. The next home was supposed to be my parents' home as they uh, to climb and, and come and loot, as they did with many, with many uh, Jewish homes. Of course, many uh, Jews were killed, uh, businesses were looted. They escaped to Lebanon where I grew up, and therefore I uh, uh, was raised there in a much more moderate, uh, tolerant country uh, with a beautiful um, Middle Eastern culture, Arabic language, uh, Middle Eastern cuisine, so on and so forth. Hearing the inspiring sounds of the Mu'addin from the mosques. I grew up with that throughout my life, even though uh, at age 10, we moved to Mexico City and uh, at age 18, I moved to the United States to study and settled there, but I always carried with me that Middle Eastern flavor, culture, tradition, language. And so um, as a rabbi of the Edmund J. Safra Synagogue, uh, really a, a central synagogue in, in, in Manhattan, uh, Upper East Side, Central Sephardic Synagogue, I may say, I had the opportunity of meeting uh, um, officials from uh, from uh, from the UAE, as I met also Ambassador Nunu, I had the pleasure and honor of meeting her at uh, our high holiday services. And so that's how I started uh, my connection with the UAE. Then uh, over two years ago, I uh, visited the UAE, visited the small Jewish community there. Um, I was really invited by a very dear friend, Eli Epstein who was a businessman for over 30 years in that region. And then eventually a, uh, I brought with me a Sefer Torah, um, and I finished it there as a sofer in, on, in memory and honor of Sheikh uh, Zayed Al Nahyan, the late uh, um, uh, founder, father uh, of, of the country and the, the father of the present rulers. And that's how I begin, uh, began uh, getting to know the community, um, was in touch with them. Uh, I was being consulted with many issues as I knew the region and, and, the, and, and the culture. And eventually uh, the community and uh, Rabbi Sarna uh, offered me that position around October, beginning of October, I thought about it. And I uh, said, this is a historic moment. We are at the crossroads of history. Uh, maybe this is a mission that uh, I'm being put up uh, to, uh, to, to, to be there and, and develop the Jewish community. And that's how I, uh, I accepted the position and I began uh, there over three months ago. So it's uh, brand, brand new and fresh, but you had, you know, prior exposure. Uh, Ambassador Nunu, um, uh, you made headlines in November uh, about your, uh, your first trip to uh, Israel. We would love, be honored to hear about that trip um, and to learn more about it. It was actually an honor and privilege to participate in the first official Bahraini delegation to Israel, led by Foreign Minister His Excellency Dr. Abdullah Khif bin Rashid Zayani 
flying on a national carrier, Gulf Air Flight number 972, which in itself is symbolic. This was my very first trip to Israel. We were only on the ground for less than 12 hours. It was a surreal experience. During my five years in Washington, I made many new friends. and was often asked if I had been to Israel. I always said, not yet. In my heart, I had hoped and prayed for the opportunity, but I was determined to wait for the moment when circumstances would allow such a visit. But as a loyal and committed citizen of Bahrain, I naturally respected the reality of the situation. I could only dream. In November, that dream became reality. Ironically, I had never been to Israel before, but less than a week later, I was invited to participate in a second Bahraini delegation, this time with the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence. Amazing, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing. And for those uh, um, viewing from around the world, we've uh, we put up our distinguished guests' uh, bios um, to read and learn more about them, which we'll learn more about through the questions. Um, Rabbi Abadi, um, the Jewish community, as I mentioned um, in the introduction, the, the Jewish community in the UAE has made headlines around the world in the last few months and seems to be one of the fastest growing Jewish communities in the diaspora. Uh, what Jewish infrastructure is in place currently and what are you working on building over the next few years? Uh, well, uh, the Jewish community has been there uh, for, as I said, many years, maybe not as a community, but as individuals who would get together for prayer services, for social occasions, um, only in the last, I would say, seven years that started to coalesce, uh, and only about uh, three, four years ago that uh, that they, they became kind of uh, more of a uh, a steady <clears throat> community with with a location for prayer and social uh, social uh, services. The community was recognized uh, over two years ago uh, during the year of tolerance that the UAE declared um, in 2019. They were also featured in the book of tolerance that the UAE published uh, at the heel of the signing of the human fraternity document with the Pope, uh, the Imam from Al-Azhar uh, and several uh, uh, rabbis. Uh, and, and that was the, the recognition uh, that was given to the Jewish community featured in that book. But of course, the community is small, uh, was small, and it's definitely growing. And uh, we just uh, two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, we received the official license by the government as a recognized, as the first recognized Jewish community in Dubai. Uh, the infrastructure uh, so far is very humble, so to speak. Uh, that, 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 that is one of the reasons why I was brought there to build the infrastructure to establish the community as uh, I have been doing, uh, as I did in the city uh, with the Safra community and, and several others that did in Chicago in the past. I um, I've kind of uh, have gotten experience in establishing communities from uh, the bottom up, uh, successful communities, growing communities, thank God. And so that's what I was brought in Dubai to basically build the community up. Uh, there is will. Uh, they are people, and now uh, we are starting to establish that community. But of course, with a with a, a synagogue, a location, with eventually a school, which uh, we are also planning at, uh, with also uh, a mikveh, which is uh, so necessary, and there is none so far, and of course a kosher certification agency, uh, the Arabian kosher certification agency that I have established where we could be able to certify um, hotels, caterers, restaurants, but also products that are either produced there or imported, exported by, by the UAE. And also eventually a Bedin, which we are also establishing all also under the aegis of the Association of Gulf Jewish Communities, where we will have a Bedin functioning for personal status issues of gitin, uh, marriages, uh, life cycles, uh, a registry of, of, uh, of life cycle events and, and Jewish community members. So slowly, slowly, the community is going to grow and with all the, the necessary institutions, foundational institutions really that, that are needed to service a Jewish, a growing Jewish community, where we'll be able not only to service the Jews living there, but also the Jews that are passing by either as just plain tourists or as business tourists or as uh, families that uh, are coming to settle there, which there are since I have come here 
three and a half months ago, at least five to eight families have, uh, some of them have already moved and some of them are in the process of moving, moving there. Extraordinary. Um, I've actually shared, as, um, as Rabbi Yabadi, as you're um, sharing that, I've shared the, the screenshot of the Association of Gulf Jewish Communities. We'll be talking about it further, but um, that this new entity um, is it's under those auspices where you serve as the Rav. I know that um, as we've shared in your bio and, um, and the president of the entity is President Ibrahim uh, Dawood Nunu. I know a cousin uh, to the ambassador and uh, who's based in Bahrain. And I, I believe Ambassador Nunu, you also serve on the board of this entity, this, uh, this brand new entity. So tell us Ambassador Nunu more about Bahrain um, you know, as a community that has been well-established um, you know, for, for generations, we would uh, be very interested to learn more about that and to, uh, as we explore this, um, this new frontier. Sure, so the um, Bahraini Jewish community is the only indigenous community in the Gulf. Uh, the community dates back to the 1880s when the Jews from Iraq uh, were on their way to India. The boat actually stopped in Bahrain. They liked what they saw and they ended up staying here. Um, and since then, we have actually become part of the fabric of Bahraini society. My grandfather in, the in 1934 was elected into the municip municipality council. And a number of us currently serve in various roles within the government, including the Shura Council, which is our upper house of parliament. Um, we have the only operating Jewish cemetery in the Gulf. And we also have the oldest synagogue, which was established in the 1930s. And currently we're in the process of actually refurbishing the synagogue. And we hope to be able to welcome you all when you visit us soon. Uh, just to add something else to that, um, we actually haven't had a Sefer Torah in the synagogue since the 50s. And once we finish the refurbishment of the synagogue, we're going to have three Sefer Torahs. So from going from zero to three in, um, in six months. <laughs> Amazing. So there's a history, a legacy, and it's building new and, you know, really building on the past, the tradition, uh, which, which makes this whole uh, new enterprise so, so, so fascinating. So, so fascinating. Um, Rabbi Abadi, as an American and a Jew recently arriving in the Gulf, although I, you know, understand from this presentation that, that there were other uh, opportunities to connect, but for, for those listening um, from, from America and from other countries, uh, who perhaps will come and visit and be uh, among the tourists who, to visit, perhaps among those who would consider to move. Um, how has the reception been, how has the reception been to you from the government officials and religious leaders uh, upon your arrival? I have had a very, very good reception from day one. Uh, first, of course, by the, by the community itself, and secondly, by the Emirati people who are very enthusiastic about the presence of a Jewish community there. Uh, many of them, they want to learn Hebrew. Many of them, they want to learn about the Torah, about our traditions, about our minhagim, our halachot. Uh, and certainly by government officials who have opened up their offices and their services uh, to me and to the community and uh, wanting to help us in, in any way possible. Um, I, I do have to say, however, that I think my, uh, my Middle Eastern background uh, uh, has uh, broken down all barriers. Uh, and so when I speak with an Emirati or with a government official, we speak in a complete honesty and frankness. We speak uh, the Mamelushan, not the Yiddish, Arabic. Uh, and so uh, we understand each other very well. Uh, we know our cultures well, and many of them are, are, are really eager to learn more about our culture. Uh, uh, you know, the, of course, the Jewish tradition, but, but specifically about Middle Eastern Jewish tradition, which uh, they find to be very close to, to, to you know, to, to the tradition of, of, of Islam and Arabic tradition in the region, which, uh, which really makes uh, accommodation much faster. I have to tell you, I've been asked, uh, Ha, have you have you adjusted uh, to, to the place? Uh, how, how long did it take you to adjust? And I must say, it, there was no need to adjust uh, from the, the first uh, step that I took in the streets of Dubai, I felt very well adjusted. First, because I'm used to Arabic language. I hear it, I, I read it. Uh, and so uh, I see it in, in signs. I remember my childhood in Lebanon seeing it. 
uh, hearing the language, hearing the mu'addan, you know, for, for, for a real American who never heard the mu'addan and never heard Arabic might need some adjustment, but thank God I did not need any of those adjustments. Secondly, even to adjust to New York uh, uh, environment, the beautiful skyscrapers in Dubai, the skyline of Dubai and in Abu Dhabi, and for that matter, also Bahrain that I already visited, the beautiful skyscrapers, beautiful buildings, uh, very similar to New York. So that was completely uh, not foreign to me uh, and no need to adjust. Um, the lingua franca in, in the UAE is actually English, uh, not Arabic, uh, and so, uh, from all aspects, from my Middle Eastern background and my Western uh, uh, background, if I may say, I felt very, very welcomed, very adjusted, very quickly, as I said, really no need to adjust and uh, hit the road running, as they say, uh, from day one. Terrific. So speaking of hitting the ground running, so um, Ambassador Anuna, your, your Twitter, um, your Twitter um, feed and Shabbat Shalom series has made headlines uh, in the US where, where I reside and in the community at large in Israel. Um, what inspired you to create that? And you know, what, uh, what, what's next in your, uh, in your social media you know, pursuits? Okay, um, I've always enjoyed connecting with people. And after the Abraham Accords, I received many inquiries from media and Jews around the world, asking me what it meant for me, to, for our community and asking to learn more about Bahrain and our Jewish community. That's what, that's when I decided to actually join Twitter, rejoin Twitter, because I've always I was always on, but I didn't really do much for the last few years. In many ways, the response was even more than I anticipated. Many of the questions I receive center around the common theme. What is it like being Jewish in Bahrain? While I could continue to answer those questions, I wanted to do more. I wanted to show just how accepting Bahrain is of our religion. So I was inspired to create the series where each Friday I bring traditionally Jewish items like my Shabbat candles and my Kiddush cup and the now famous Kedem bottle and take a picture of them with Bahraini landmarks such as the Tree of Life and Jasra Beach, which overlooks the bri bridge that links Saudi Arabia to Bahrain. And I have a few other locations scouted already, so, I've, so feel free to join along. So far, the two words Shabbat Shalom have created a buzz. And these tweets have reached more than a quarter of a million people from all over the world who wish each other Shabbat Shalom because of these tweets. The feedback has been amazing. Jews, Muslims, Christians from all over the world, US, UK, Europe, Gulf, Israel, and other Middle Eastern countries and Asia, all replying with a Shabbat Shalom greeting of their own and learning about Bahrain at the same time. My hope is that after COVID, more people will come and visit Bahrain in person and experience these sites for themselves. But until then, I'll continue to enjoy, enjoy sharing these little slices with you of Bahrain. Thank you, and we'll share, um, we'll share the handle out so we can wish Shabbat Shalom to everyone, even from a distance. Thank um, you. So we, we have received a few questions that I'll, I'll share. This would be to both, to both Ambassador Nidu and Sir Abai Abadi. Um, so um, we, we've talked about the announcement of the Association of Gulf Jewish Communities um, I noticed you have an acronym, which you know in America means it's official. Uh, when you have acronyms, when people call you by the acronym, then it's uh, it's uh, one month, two months, or, or hundred years. It becomes the um, the reference point. So, can you, can you share with walk us a, a little further back? Um, um, the questions we've the, that we've discussed are, were more on the practical realm, of course, in, in building the community and servicing the needs. Um, can, can you both share a little bit more about the backstory? the formation of an organization. So many of us um, are, um, you know, participating in organizational life and um, are take things for granted, a beit din, kashrut, and all the different services that go into that. It would be interesting for us to learn more about the backstory and the origin of the creation of this, you know, very new entity as of officially last week. I'm sure it was not created in one week. So we'd be interested to learn about all the hard work. This is the time to brag and share all the hard work that uh, went into it. Okay, so I'll, I'll go first, if you don't mind, Rabbi Abadi. Please, please, please. Okay, so, um, so basically it was actually created in just a little bit more than a week. And it was a lot of effort. I, a thought, lot so. Of, I thought so. Just a little bit. It was a lot of hard work from everybody on, on the board and on our team. 
so basically, as, as the Jewish life is growing and flourishing in the Gulf, the local Jewish communities of Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates are stronger when we are united and can harness our collective resources. The AGJC represents an unprecedented partnership between the Jews of the Gulf. While each of our communities is independent, we share a common goal and vision to grow Jewish life in the Gulf for both the benefit of our immediate local communities, but also for the Jewish tourists who have, who have and continue to visit the region. Our first event is actually tomorrow and it's a virtual Purim celebration and we invite you all to join us. I believe that Rabbi Ari has the contact details for anyone yep. who would like to join. It's going on the screen right now. Um, Thank you. We hope to see you again uh, tomorrow. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, we're going to post that uh, as well. That, that's, uh, that's fascinating. Rabbi Abadi, please share your... Um, right. So, so as I arrived uh, into uh, Dubai and uh, knowing that there is a, a beautiful Jewish community in Bahrain, uh, slowly, slowly, we uh, figured that there are a few more Jews around the rest of the, of the countries in the Gulf and um, came to the realization uh, that um, many of those Jews don't have the basic Jewish services. Um, I mean, even, even in, 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 in the UAE at the beginning. And, and that is, you know, as a rabbi, the basic Jewish services are religious guidance, uh, religious leadership, spiritual uh, guidance, and pastoral care. Um, so this is the basic first and foremost services that any individual Jew or community require. And being that uh, I'm the only rabbi in that region uh, of the community, uh, therefore I felt that responsibility to, uh, to provide those services and will be providing those services to every community in that region and to every individual Jew. Uh, and some of the places will be in person which I already did in Bahrain. Ambassador Nunu knows that, right? She invited me. And, um, and God willing, uh, we'll be doing it in the rest of, 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 the, of, the, of the Gulf countries, either in person or via Zoom. So that's first and foremost important service that we need to give every individual Jew. Secondly, uh, of course, uh, the kosher availability food, and that's through our Arabian Kosher Certification Agency where we are going to be helping uh, Jews, individual Jews and smaller communities in the Gulf to receive kosher products, especially now for Pesach, we are planning to provide them with masa, with the uh, haroset, with whatever is necessary for them to be able to, to, to celebrate uh, Pesach, Passover uh, appropriately and properly. And of course, um, you know, joining them and leading their life cycle milestones uh, Again, Brit Milah, Bar Mitzvah, Bat Mitzvah, weddings, Gitin, unfortunately, or whatever necessary uh, services of, of that uh, of that uh, category, that all the Jews in the in, in the Gulf will be able to to have. Even if there is one individual Jew, they will be able to to rely on the AGJC, our acronym. Uh, to get uh, to get those services, and of course we mention about the bedin and things like that. But basically, what's most important for a Jew uh, uh, in a daily life is basically religious uh, guidance, spiritual, uh, uh, sir, you know, uh, pastoral care, and and that's basically. And we came to the realization that together we could do it better. We could pull, as it was mentioned, pull our resources together. Some communities may have more things than others. And therefore, instead of duplicating and, and adding things, we could all pull together our resources and help each other and help each other grow. And specifically, this organization is for the locals, of course, but also to serve the greater uh, Jewish tourists, business tourists, and those people who may stay for one, two, three, four, up to six months, if not more, in, in the Gulf, either conducting their business or establishing their business so they'll have a Jewish community to count on for all the necessary Jewish uh, services that they need. Thank you. So someone wants to know if there's a Pesach program happening in, uh, in, um, in the Gulf region. Um, and so are there Pesach Purim? We, have, we know about Purim and uh, we'll share that, but uh, are there Pesach and other holiday programs? They, the they, they are, they are, there are at least two or three programs in the UAE. Uh, I, I don't know if in Bahrain there is, but I know there is in the UAE two to three programs. There was supposed to be almost 10, 
but because of COVID, some of them were were not uh, were not were scratched uh, completely. Uh, but uh, there's going to be two or three. Uh, there's going to be one in Abu Dhabi, and there might be two or three in, in Dubai itself. So yes, probably I would recommend uh, uh, Google, uh, you know, Dubai Pesach or UAE Pesach, and they will they will find it. But there is going to be a specific program that uh, I will be part of it, and that's uh, run by Ellis Kosher kosher catering uh, services, which will be uh, in Dubai, and there will be one also in Abu Dhabi. Terrific, thank you. And, the, and um, there could be a piece of program about it as well, but it's going to be on a very small scale because of uh, COVID. So uh, hopefully it will happen because we're still not sure because things are changing on a daily basis. Yes. No, I, unfortunately, that's the reality of, of our world today. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's happening in the, uh, in the Gulf region is happening everywhere. So we all hope in, 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 uh, in a year's time, we'll have a different conversation. Um, um, I just want to encourage everyone, again, I've shared on the screen um, before the, the email. For those who have questions, we're glad to, uh, to entertain those and, and share those with our, with our distinguished guests. Um, what do you hope each community will contribute to this um, to this enterprise? Um, of course, we we've learned now from Ambassador Nunu the the history and legacy of Bahrain, uh, the emerging community Rabbi body that you're now engaged in building. Um, but but within the six countries that um, that are now part of this umbrella, uh, I imagine there's different you know different uh, histories, different constituencies, both who who live there and those who would pass through for business and for travel and destination, vacation and otherwise. So um, can, 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 we, can we learn more about that uh, in terms of the current state and perhaps a desired state, even on the short term, in terms of how it will all come together within all six countries? Well, go ahead, please, Ambassador, go ahead. Ambassador Nino. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, 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 well, um, Ambassador Nuno said about the Bahraini community so um, and, and its history. Uh, in the Arabian Peninsula, there has been Jewish presence even before the advent of Islam. Uh, we know in Medina there was a Jewish community. We know in Hijaz there was Jewish communities. Uh, so in the Arabian Peninsula, there has been uh, definitely Jewish communities, uh, maybe over 2,000 years old. Um, but of course, eventually, probably the last Jewish community in the Arabian Peninsula existed maybe 800 years ago. Although uh, there was a discovery of a Jewish tombstone uh, in uh, Ras al Khaimah uh, uh, Emirate of the UAE, and that's the emirate that is abutting the, the Gulf. Uh, there was a Jewish tombstone believed to be five or six hundred years old. So. Um, we see that there was definitely presence of, uh, of uh, Jewish individuals, if not communities. There's also a uh, known uh, cemetery on Oman in, in, in a called uh, the city of Sohar, S-O-H-A-R, which there must have been a Jewish community there to be able to have a Jewish cemetery. So, um, you know, don't forget that um, the, the, that region of the UAE plus Oman and Bahrain, they were uh, part of the, of the ports that linked linked the Middle East with the Far East, and many Jewish businessmen uh, traveled uh, that, that route and must have settled in, in those regions, especially in Oman and maybe in Ras al Khaimah, uh, and as on their business travel. So um, what, what's new now is that in the UAE as a country that there is now a Jewish community. That, that is new in a sense. That I would say probably is the newest Jewish community uh, uh, in the entire Middle East or in any Arab country in the last maybe a hundred years. Uh, but maybe as de novo, maybe I would say in the last 800 years as a really de novo. Uh, there might have been the other newer community in Arab countries, but they were maybe, uh, uh, they developed from previous communities that existed. Uh, and, and, and the Middle East and North Africa. But this is a really de novo, de novo uh, community. Though the presence of, uh, of Jewish communities in the Arabian Peninsula, as I said, dates to over 2000 years from the second uh, 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 temple destruction and exile. And certainly during the advent of Islam, Jewish communities lived in the Arabian Peninsula. 
Ambassador Nunu, thank you. I'll, I'll just talk it directly in Bahrain how it's gonna basically gonna affect us. Uh, it's an important milestone. So uh, we're gonna have actually access to a rabbi who can actually come to Bahrain to officiate Jewish life cycles events. Um, we also have some upcoming events like uh, taking place, including a wedding in the community. And to have a rabbi who will uh, who can just fly in will uh, will make the wedding remarkable. The last wedding in Bahrain was actually in 1969. So this wedding will be one after nearly 50 years. So that's that is an amazing feat that we can actually do that here. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, think, thinking forward uh, five, 10 years, I know that's, um, you know, uh, you know, we're starting three months ago. So five or 10 years is hard to uh, project, um, but describe each of you, um, if you could share some some dreams, some aspirations, you know, what what's uh, what do the communities look like? What can we look forward to um, in, in in the period ahead? Uh, Ambassador Nunu. Okay, uh, so Jewish life in the Gulf is going to continue to grow, and as more Jews move to the region for business opportunities, there will be a greater need for more kosher food options, uh, Pesach programs, uh, like Rabbi Abadi already mentioned. Uh, Jewish schools, youth programming, additional synagogues, and additional Jewish infrastructure. Uh, we created the AGJC with this in mind, so we can help the Jewish communities of various sizes grow at their own appropriate pace. The Gulf has many things to offer. Whereas anti-Semitism is on the rise in the West, we don't have any issues with that here. It's a great lifestyle, and it's a wonderful place to raise a family. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Abadi. Well, uh, I'm estimating that uh, the Jewish presence in the Gulf will definitely increase. Uh, presently in the UAE, we have approximately 1,000 Jews. That's estimated to be. Uh, 800 of those probably live in Dubai itself, but only 200 to 250 live a public life as, a, as, as Jews. Um, but as, as normalization will continue and more countries of the Gulf will open up, uh, I do believe that that is going to happen sooner or later. Um, then more Jews will be moving to the to to to, to the neighborhood, <laughs> to, to to the Gulf neighborhood. I, I estimating that at least the UAE Jewish population within the next uh, three to five years will increase to possibly three thousand people, and maybe in ten years will increase to five to eight thousand people. Uh, Again, the, the, the population will consist of um, first, uh, of course, there are going to be tourists who are going to be coming just for tourism. The second group uh, who I believe that will be coming to the Gulf will be Jewish business uh, people who uh, might come first for a month or two to establish a business and then they'll eventually decide to reside. Um, some others will come to live here permanently because of an appointment of a, a job, a, you know, a multinational companies that have a, a location here. And believe it or not, I do believe that uh, Jews from Europe and, and from the United States, if not escaping anti-Zionism, but, but trying to find a more safe and secure life uh, without anti-Semitism, uh, uh, will find it here in the Gulf, in the Gulf uh, area. It is uh, ironic, I have to say, and unfortunate that, that uh, well, Europe, we know Europe uh, was always, uh, 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 you know, pl plenty of anti-Semitism there throughout the ages. But now that it's rearing its head again, uh, its ugly head again, so many of the uh, European Jews will be moving, I think, to the area if they don't choose to make Aliyah because uh, many of those European Jews, their origin is really from the Middle East and North Africa. So they will find the Gulf, a region that it's uh, more hospitable, maybe closer to their uh, origins and, and traditions. But believe it or not, I believe also American Jews will be moving in uh, to live in this area if they don't choose uh, Aliyah, given that the rise of anti-Semitism in the United States is taking place and the political upheaval that is taking place there might really encourage more Jews to move uh, to the area here. So yes, we are expecting a, a significant growth. And as Ambassador Nuno said, the establishment of this organization is to be prepared to service the growth of the Jewish communities. Okay, thank you. Um, 
we've been receiving numerous questions. Um, um, there's two in particular I'd like to, uh, to, um, to, to share now. Um, I, and I'm going to ask them specifically to each of you, um, as you'll understand. So um, one of our participants um, um, would like to know, and this one's for Ambassador Nuno, um, they would like to, to know more about the, the dress of, of women uh, in terms of uh, in terms of standard, in terms of style and expectation in Bahrain. Dr. Abadi, Rabbi Abadi can answer that as well from a different perspective, but that one I just figured would uh, okay. uh, be your way. So yes. women in Bahrain, we have, we have freedom to dress how we want to dress. So you have the, uh, basically the people who are covered from top to bottom and all you can see are their eyes. And on the other spectrum, you have the people who wear shorts and t-shirts. So it's, um, it's uh, basically like if you were in Europe or if you were in the United States, it's the same code of dress. Um, when I, I'll, I'll give you an example. When I was in the States, I went to, a, um, to an event in Texas and after I gave my uh, talk about, uh, about investing in Bahrain, one of the guys put up his hand and said, can I ask a question? I said, go ahead. And he goes to me, uh, why would we invest in Bahrain? You oppress your woman. So I looked at him and I said, how, do, how are we oppressed? I'm Bahraini, I'm female, and I'm standing here in front of you. Do I look oppressed? And he said, yes, you are not allowed. To, if you were in Bahrain, you wouldn't be allowed to uh, dress the way you want. You'd have to get your husband's permission to go out. Uh, you can't drive a car. So I said, let me stop you here. In Bahrain, we're allowed to drive a car. Uh, my husband doesn't even know where I am at the moment. And we dress the same way that I'm dressed right here in front of you. Now, at the time I was wearing a short dress with short sleeves. So that question comes up quite often in the, in the United States, but we can dress the way we want to, or the way we feel comfortable. Terrific. And a follow-up to that is the dress, I assume the dress would be different perhaps in every country. There was a, in terms of uh, for, for women in, in the other countries in the Gulf. Uh, not really, no. Um, you, you'd, you'd see more people who actually wear the hijab in, uh, in the local communities in the Emirates and obviously in Saudi Arabia. But again, you have the expatriate who, women who can dress the way they want. So it's both ways. And even if, the, if a woman is wearing an abaya on top, which is the cloak on top, when she goes to her friend's house and she takes that cloak off, she is wearing the modern Western style clothing underneath that cloak. Terrific, thank you. And uh, for Abay Abadi, um, one of our participants has asked, um, and um, Ambassador Nunu, you can also share your, um, your insights. Um, is there already, or will there be an Ar Arabic translated Sidur in any time in the near future? Uh, well, uh, there uh, has been uh, in the past uh, Sidurim in Arabic. In the last century, some of them were printed, uh, believe it or not, in Livorno also. Uh, Italy printed in Arabic, uh, so they have been that in the past, and we will revive those Sidurim. Uh, Rabbi uh, Yosef Haim, who was the, the you know the the, the leader Resh Kaluta in, in Bavel uh, over a hundred years ago, he has uh, published several books of halachot actually in Arabic, uh, and so yes, we expect to to re uh, re give give. give rebirth of, of those uh, Sidonim or books on halacha in Arabic. In fact, when the UAE uh, officials that came to visit me in, in the synagogue in New York City uh, over 10, 12 years ago, I showed them some of those uh, Sidurim in Arabic and books of halacha, they were quietly impressed by them. So yes, I believe that we will uh, renew uh, publication of those uh, Sidurim, Humashim, uh, Book of Halakha and Arabic. Yes, we will. Can I, can I add something there? Please, uh, last, yeah. last year, I ordered a sudur, the, uh, the Farhi sudur uh, from Amazon.com, and it's in Arabic, Arabic Hebrew. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so what, the, what, what is it called it's, again? It's the Farhi, F A R H I. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, extraordinary. You can find everything on Amazon.com. <laughs> so, um, some more questions that are coming in. It, it appears that, that uh, um, we've had a very convincing case for Jewish presence and continued presence in the, in the region. Um, several of our participants have inquired about um, the plans for living infrastructure 
in the region, and particularly if, if either of you uh, could address uh, the question of schools. I know that the, uh, you know, we have a, we're, you know, this audience is very, um, you know, they, they, as we say, tachlit, they want to know uh, practical, uh, you know, we'll, they'll visit, but we're already at the point of understanding living infrastructure, schools, um, and, and the like. Is that something on the horizon? Is that something that people inquire about and so forth? And I'll uh, put that out to both of you to share. Ambassador Nuno, is there any thoughts? Or anybody sure. After? Oh, uh, sure. So um, schools in Bahrain, we cater for the, uh, the in the Arabic curriculum with the government schools, and then we have the private schools. Uh, the private schools, we, we don't have a Jewish school as yet. Um, I forgot to mention that our Jewish community in Bahrain is less than 50 people. So we are growing. Um, so the, the schools that the uh, international schools that we have, we have the American school based here, we have the uh, British schools, we have um, Chinese, we have Japanese, we have Indian, we have Pakistani. So we've got schools that cater to all the different expatri expatriate communities in Bahrain. Um, the education is pretty high standard. My sons actually, uh, one of them went to the school of the uh, the defense, the uh, the, uh, the uh, U.S. defense. And when I used to write my checks, it used to be written out to the, the, the uh, Treasury Department. And my other son used to go to the British school. So I've I've had I've got um, uh, experience with both systems. Um, honestly, I found the, the American school much better because it allowed my son to grow and communicate and be himself. Uh, so schools schools are available. If you go to a like, uh, supermarket, supermarkets you can get everything on the shelves that you would get in Europe or in the U.S. A lot of the items actually have the uh, the OU certification or the it's a, like a it shows that it's uh, kosher para So uh, we even have matzahs on our shelves in Bahrain, but unfortunately they're not kosher for Passover. So we need to get the ones that are kosher for Passover for next month. Um, everything is is easy, it's easy to to live here. It's easy to adapt to living in Bahrain. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. Thank you. And Rabbi Abadi, any? Uh... Well, so uh, as we speak, uh, plans for a school are already on the drawing board uh, in, in, in the UAE. Um, we will most likely start with like an early childhood program as, uh, as uh, you, you know, the majority of the kids are of that age. There's also a few kids in seven, eight, nine, ten years old, but uh, there will not be enough to, to start a, an elementary school, but we want to start from early childhood and grow the school year by year, grade by grade. Uh, so that will be in place with the Arabian Kosher Certification Agency. We will be uh, providing a certification to, as I said, to many restaurants, which I have had already in, in the region, uh, not just in the UAE, but the entire region asking for kosher certification of product. You can also find um, American products and European product already with certification from uh, you, uh, from the US, uh, either the OU, the OK, or the Star K, likewise from Europe. So we will have all of that um, uh, ready uh, for, uh, for any Jewish individual or Jewish communities to, to, uh, to enjoy. So I'll, for those people who are asking practical questions, by the time you make it uh, to our neighborhood, you'll have all those services ready for you. Thank you. Um, I'm sharing once again on the screen um, for those who are not viewing it live, they're viewing it on um, this audio. So there's a uh, www.gulfjewish.org is the website for this uh, new emerging uh, organization, Association of Gulf Jewish Communities. Um, since we're being so practical, um, how, how can uh, we best reach out to uh, you know, local community leadership if people have inquiries about living and otherwise, would they go through this website? Is there, are there, are there contact information is all in there? Yes, the best, Sorry. Sorry. The, best, the best way is to go through the website, uh, gulfjewish.org, and all the questions are there. Um, if, um, you can actually ask what question you want and we will reply back. Terrific, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a good start with, with this website. And then eventually they will be directed to specific country that they, they, they're asking about or the specific uh, issue that they're asking about. But that, that the very good start will be through that website, correct. 
terrific. Uh, final thoughts, final reflections, final messages to uh, to our worldwide audience, Ambassador Nunu. Okay, so um, being Jewish in Bahrain is is very unique. Being Jewish in the Gulf is extremely unique as well. But now with the Abraham Accords, it's allowed us to be seen that people are very interested in how we can be Jewish and Arab and living in the in in Bahrain or living in the in the uh, in the Middle East. Um, I think with the HGJC, we can answer a lot of questions for, to people who have who want to know more about us, and we're always open to suggestions. With the AG, AGJC, we're also going to be doing a lot of uh, shiur by by Rab, Dr. Rabbi Abadi. So there's going to be events on a regular basis. It's not going to be just one off of Purim event. It's going to be events on a on a regular basis. Uh, we are actually planning our next event as well for Yom Hashua. Uh, in April, I think it's going to be April the 7th. We haven't actually said the date yet, but I think it's April the 7th because we have to go with Israel on that one. And it's going to be a continuous event. So please do uh, join in, give us your email address, and we can be, keep you updated on any events that we have in the future. Terrific. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank, thank you. So Remy Abadi. Final, uh, yes. final uh, so first, let me thank you for for this opportunity to appear uh, at this webinar uh, and uh, and say that um, that indeed uh, we are at the crossroads of history. Uh, I think we are making history. Um, the history of the Jewish people is uh, whenever there is a door closing, there's always a door opening uh, somewhere else. Uh, and so I believe that this door is opening and it will be open quite wide um, for a new Jewish life in the region, uh, a thriving Jewish life. Uh, where is the door going to be closing? Uh, uh, I don't want to, I'm not a prophet, but uh, it looks like it's closing in Europe a little bit and it might eventually close in the United States. But be that as it may, as we know, the Kadosh Baruch Hu Makdim Trufala Maka, the Almighty always uh, gives the the healing portion before the disease comes. And I do believe that uh, the Gulf region is that healing portion. Uh, the door is opening up wide and will continue to open wider and will be an alternative place for Jews to come and live and, and grow and thrive. And uh, we, uh, who we were placed in, in that area, uh, it's our responsibility to, to, uh, to look to the future and as leaders to provide all what's necessary for the growing Jewish community. And this is the beginning of that. And uh, when, when we take care of, of our Jewish community or Jewish individuals, uh, we know that we're doing the, the right thing. So uh, we are here to, to, to service uh, any Jew in the world who would like to come here, to live here, or to pass by and uh, needs to, to, to feel uh, at home in a sense, to have all the, Jewish services necessary, we are, we are there for them. And as I said, uh, it's a historic moment. We're making history and we need to uh, ride with the wave of that and do our responsible thing as leaders. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, some more questions have come in about visas and access and I'm gonna encourage all who have participated and we'll share a note out with everyone who's participated, everyone um, who are members of our ambassador OIC ambassadorship, the Shekel Society, our board members, all those who've gathered from our Mizrahi branches around the world. We thank you all for, for joining and we'll make sure to uh, um, receive the information from the ambassador and from, from Rabbi Abadi to share on from the practical to the visionary to everything else. I, I want to uh, just very sincerely thank you both for taking the time uh, to, to be with us. I know that this is, uh, um, um, as was just said, a momentous, historic uh, occasion. And I'm sure it's uh, quite a busy time as well, you know, with, uh, with the holiday coming up. So thank you both so, so much on behalf of all of us for, uh, for, for joining with us. And um, I want to just close, if I may, with, you know, we, we, we talked about at the beginning that we're on the eve of Purim. And one of the messages of Purim is, of course, Leich Kinos Ekol HaYudim, Queen Esther, um, you know, uh, who will fast, will, fa will fast along with Esther tomorrow or tomorrow night in, in diaspora in Jerusalem, you know, also, but we will celebrate Purim over a number of days now around the world. And uh, Kinos, an idea of gathering together in unity, in this case, we're really gathering around the world, is, 
is, is part of the solution. Our unity, our achdut, our togetherness. And uh, we're just so honored that we've had a chance to learn uh, about a, a whole new frontier, a legacy uh, of, of the community that you're part of. And uh, thank you for giving us a window into this, into your world. And uh, from the nature of the questions, it looks like there'll be much more follow-up uh, from that. And we thank you for that and wish everyone a, uh, an easy fast uh, on Tanit Esther and a wish everyone a Chag Purim Sameach. We do these town halls once a month and we'll have upcoming information about future events. Um, we'll look forward to sharing that. And if anyone has questions, please do email uh, to the Mizrahi Town Hall at gmail.com. Thank you both so, so much. I would also, in one final word, like to thank Ariela Steinreich, who has been a, uh, a great friend and uh, a connector for so much that has taken place. We thank you, Ariella. We thank everyone for, uh, for joining us. We wish everyone a good, good rest of the morning, afternoon, evening, and a Purim Sameach and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.